two octaves, right? So a triad is going to be what? One, three, five, right? So it's going to be this note. These three notes of the scale, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was from about maybe 1400. Not that far. <laughs> and then we added a note. books written in the 1800s saying that this is a dissonant tone, it's an avoid tone. So, music theory pretty much that up until later. This is it. This is early, like medium, late, and then, ah! Yeah. And they went back to this. Okay? Was it Jaws easy? Oh, ho, ho, ho! Woo! So what happened here? <laughs> Who came along and decided, ah, you guys don't know nothing. Let me show you how to do this right. Um, Who's the guy? Can I get a hint? George Russell. Okay, no, George Russell. Russell. He was a Reed's <laughs> professor. No way. Reed wrote a chapter in this book. Dang. That's why. <laughs> what was the name of the book? Anyone? No. George Russell's book. <laughs> so he figured out that that 11 is a grinder, but if you take that 11 and you sharp it, what happens to it? Beautiful. So we got. C, <laughs> sharp eleven. Ah, angelic and dreamy now. So it fits. It fits. It fits. It fits. So why does it fit? Because it's part of the overtone series, the natural acoustically occurring overtone series. But now. Wait a minute here. 
Somebody figured this out like 2,600 years ago. Though. 2,600 years ago. Greeks. Greek. Greek. Ancient Greece. Who was the dude that figured it all out? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Greek so if you take a string, you got 440, right? Yeah. Half of that distance, 880, right? Yeah. And half of that distance, 7660, right? So he started by measuring distance of string lengths and changing their lengths to half and ratios. So the experimental with ratios of strings. What did he get here? He got octaves, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So how did he get a fifth? Half. Half, half what? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Two thirds of length of string. Yeah. <laughs> so he figured out this series of notes. So if you have a C, G is the overtone, right? Yes, sir. How do you? Fifth above G is going to be what? Uh, D. D. Fifth above D? A. Fifth above A? B. Fifth above E? B. And then? Notes are the over, are the overtones of fifths produced by just single note, right? If you keep going up in fifths, fifths automatically will produce an F sharp. So if I go from low C, above the fifth. from the 1700s and 1800s, and everybody just sort of bypasses talking about using the 11th however way they can. They're scared they, of it? They don't want to deal with it because they don't have an explanation for was it. Was it like the tritone? How people didn't like using the tritone? No, that was like earlier than, I mean, that was like back in like 1100. <laughs> El Diablo, the tritone was a, a lot of it was a, Yeah, it was the devil. Was, no, yeah. Did none of, like did nobody like think the sharp 
Sharpie 11. Like, they're just all that dumb. Like, I know, right? They're like, they, like one thing just like happened. They, they didn't, they didn't go, they didn't, they didn't, first of all, from like box time, he went up to like seven chords at the most. <laughs> no, it was up there, sure. What? No, I wanted to add on to the I mean, he asked a good question. It was, did nobody do it? I mean, I just have a theory that maybe some, I'm sure somebody thought of it, but as um, as their society would put it, you just it wasn't it mainstream. Was by far, far from mainstream. It was like so, maybe I'm sure a guy like Bach, as inquisitive as he was and as obsessed as he he was with practicing, he probably sat there in his little organ cathedral out in the forest and probably experimented like crazy with all this stuff, right? But the public was not ready to uh, get into it. Not for a long time. WC was really enjoying ninth chords, right? Yeah. So later on, people start doing this. So that 11, it works out so in a, in a major key, to make it fit, you have to sharp the 11, right? So if you sharp the 11, Ah, everything fits now. And then if you went to here, what's past 13? 15? Which is one. One. That was a So a 13th chord is as far as we go for normal harmony. Yeah, so for a major chord, yeah. sharp 11 fits the natural acoustic sonority of progression of fifths condensed into one scale. So then, well, what scale from C has a sharp the, uh, F sharp in it? G. G is one answer. Or C. Lydian. Lydian. C. Lydian. Mm -hmm. Why is it 11 before? Because I don't know how many restarts. So the C. Lydian scale covers it. Yeah, but it's got the F sharp in it. Okay, so the book that Reed wrote chapter four in is called The Lydian Chromatic Concept by George Russell. And George Russell was one of the chaps he studied with at the New England Conservatory. He was a direct disciple of George Russell. Reed was. So, you know, people, I've done these Lydian lectures before on YouTube, and people have gotten really obsessed saying that I'm not an authorized instructor of Lydian Chromatic Concept. How dare you? I go, well, I'm kind of like, one guy removed from George Russell. I studied with Reed. Yeah. So, yeah, you yeah. Oh, man. You can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm get it All right, so now there's another concept that uses this Lydian scale as its source besides the, besides the Lydian chromatic concept. The Lydian chromatic concept bases everything on the Lydian scale. There's another concept which uses this Lydian scale as its concept, but it, it's only one of nine modules in this concept. And that's the Dick Grove chord family system. basis of chord family one. He has nine different chord families in his system. 
George Russell only has one. The leading chromatic concept is based on chord family one of the Dick Grove system. <coughs> Russell had a good idea, but Dick Grove has, uh, he's duplicated, he's multiplied it by nine different chord families, and Russell's is only one chord family. The Lydian chord mode is what he calls it. Dick Grove calls it a chord stack. Russell calls it a chord mode. Uh, composers have used a Lydian scale before this, though, but no one's really brought out an organized system of music theory based on the fact that, oh, that F sharp is what we need to use these 11th chords, and so it's based on Lydian mode. Okay, so chord family one is this C major 13 plus 11 chord. So the scale that fits that chord family one has to be a C major scale with an F sharp in it, right? So you can use a C Lydian mode. He uses a C scale. and then overlap it with the G major scale. So what Dick Grove says is that this chord is a product of two overlapping scales, C major and G major together. The lower tetrachord of the C scale and the lower tetrachord of the G scale. So that's how you derive the C major 13 plus 11 chord. Okay. So what are the plural interior chords of a C major 13 plus 11? That term before, huh? No. Nope. Oh, no. out. No. 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 Sorry. But not me, man. Copy this down real quick. Oh, oh man. I'm going to show you how to break your house. I'm going to start on a line and end up in the space. I'm going to try to drop the note on the line. But it goes into the space. I didn't go to his face. I was like, uh. That's disgusting. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> Some category. Yeah. <laughs> College students, you are. I'm going to show the Wait, is it, where do you put these? Nobody, nobody <laughs> talks during grad school, school classes at all. They're all dead silent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not excited. Yeah. 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 Is that broken, hopeless? Is that why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Piled higher and deeper, right? <laughs> what? No, I'm really serious over there. Okay, so everybody got this down? Yeah. Yeah? Everybody raise your hand if they got it. Three people still don't. Still writing? taught a lot of places, but Dick Rose system and he eclipses his completely because he's got nine more members instead of one. Way more than that. So we have this scale.
got the C scale, now you got the G scale. So our stack is going to be this. So this is a full 13th chord, major 13 plus 11, derived by taking every other note of the scale, right? Right? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So when you get this jazz chord, this big 13th, big key Tonkin 13th chord, like the Jupiter of chords, there are chords inside these chords. Like the first three notes, here's what we get. We get the first one, triads, C, E, G. And we got an E, G, B. And we got a B, D, F sharp. Oops. G, B, D. D, G, F sharp. We. those triads that are contained within the stack. George Russell calls the stack a chord mode because it's a mode that's on the sides tilted straight up. It's a chord mode, a chord stack. Okay, it's a scale source. Okay, so what are these chords? C, right? E minor. E minor. G. G. Yeah, the chords, right? So what do we got here? Here's the scale. <laughs> Wouldn't D over C be a little too vague? Can you put like major or minor next to it? Or? 
major over what? No. G major over C major? So if you don't put anything next to a single letter, it means it's major? Always, yeah. That's, the, that's, I don't know if that's a rule that's handed down from the times of Zeus, I think, and Apollo. <laughs> Probably from before ancient Greece. Anytime you have a single letter, it's major. Yeah. It's probably Prometheus, from about 3400 BC, he decreed that to the Egyptians. <laughs> and they were building the pyramids, and they just looked up at him and just went. That's <laughs> <laughs> nice. Been around forever. <laughs> okay. I heard the D. <laughs> <laughs> minor over a C. Pretty similar, huh? Go ahead. Oh, no, it's just stretching. Sorry. <laughs> Me. B minor over C. So what does that tell you for part writing? Well, if you're writing for like a string, a group of string players, like three or four string players, what do they get? They get the D chord. So you write them a D chord to play. Why? Because they're playing this. They're in close proximity with each other acoustically, so they can hear each other and stay in tune. Whereas you got the people across the room playing this on basses or whatever, horns or whatever. So this is how orchestral arranging is done. This group of notes. Could be strings. Could be arranged that way if you're writing something. You want a C major 13 plus 11 chord, a big chord, big jazz chord. So you have all these chords, these plural interior chords, for this big stack here, right? So if you write the stack, it's going to be this, this huge chord. Albert, what does the guitar player do when he sees all these notes? He doesn't play any of them. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to 7-Eleven, yes. is that what happens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Late, right? At least, that was the 90s, right? Late. Late. What do they say now? Deuce in. No, it just says deuces. <laughs> I, I see a deuce in. I feel like that was like seven years. I say adios. Peace out. <laughs> I say, I, I say, say bye. Stay groovy. That's like. Can you look outside? Okay, so we've got all these See, chords that again. exist inside the stack, right? Any one of those chords you can play over that C it will give you the same basic tonality of that huge stack. Like if you have a C, try it in the bottom. Minor, right? I can play a D. I can play an F sharp diminished. That still gives you the feel of the whole stack, right? Anybody know what one chord on top of another chord is called? Polychord. I just said it. Yeah, there's a, two different things here. You got a polychord, one chord on top of another chord. Then you have another thing called a slash chord. I think I know what a slash chord is. A slash chord would be like that. Yeah. So playing a C. Exactly. That's correct. Sol Hudson. Wait, what's the difference? It looks like a different division sign. Well, a polychord <laughs> would be a chord on top of a chord, right? A slash chord would be a chord on top of just one bass note. So if I put a D on the C chord, right? You put a D up top, a C bass note. used 
all over the pop music and jazz music like crazy. Slash chords are the biggest popular chords because the right hand can play the chord, or the guitar player can play the right, play the chord, and then the bass player can play the bass note, or the two hands on the keyboard, right hand and left hand. Much easier to play. So you could play any one of these as a slash chord too. What if I put a G over C? What's that sound like? A G slash C. Is that how you write it though? Is yeah. that a slash chord? So G would be in the bass or no? G is the chord, oh. C is the bass. So then
That's a great day. So if I kept going, I'd get this chord, right? What is that? If I kept going, what would I get? So I got C major seven. If I started here, I get E minor, right? Or E minor seven. Then I get this one. G B. I'm fucking starting to see what goes on. And you have the F sharp. Ready in mode. Then you have the B. Are you old? You get all these chords based on the stack, right? You get the C major 7. E minor 7, G major 7, the B what? I'm going to go to B minor 7. Minor 7, how are you going to 7? And then the D what? D major 7. No, it's just 7. D7? No. Nah. <laughs> so this is going into thirds, right? Yeah. So all these chords are contained within the stack of that C major 13th plus 11 chord, right? Yep. So what does that tell you when you play in the C major 13th plus 11 chord? You can play E minor 7 instead, right? What would that give you? If you were to, if you were to take these two chords here, One starting on C. This one's starting on E. There's a root and a third, right? So if you were to take a C major seven, and instead play the next chord on the stack, the E minor seven, you have a one chord here, right? And what would that chord be? So a one and a three are very closely related, only by one note different, right? If you were to take that note and put it over here, that would make that a C major nine chord. So it fits exactly in the stack, right? So C major seven and E minor seven are the one chord and the three chord of the key, right? So you have these two chords, they're closely related, you can take one as a substitute for the other one. A literal substitute. So anytime you have a C major 7, you can play what chord? Uh, 13. A minor 7, right? How do you E minor 7, right? So if I have a C major 7, <laughs> So you can take these chords that are close to each other in the stack and substitute one or one for the other pretty easily. Here's what it sounds like. Substitute of the C major seven. Okay. What about the two chord in the key? What's the two chord? What key? 
C. No, sorry, D minor. Yeah, so we get this. use as a plural substitute for a two chord. Yes. <laughs> so two and four can be used to substitute each other all the time. I want to see a guitar for something. Visibly on a guitar, it looks like this. If you have, if you have a, uh, a four chord, like in G, that's the one chord. Here's your four chord. These notes are part of your four chord. But they're also part of your two chord. Here's your four chord. Here's your two chord. Here's your one chord. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. So C major seven, you can substitute an E minor seven. That's a D major seven. That's an E minor seven. Or six minor seven would be a what? A minor seven, right? Yeah. So what's an A minor seven? Or you can call it a C E G A. C major seven, right? Yeah. C E G A is C major six, right? Yeah. What's A minor seven? A G A C E G. A C E G. So A C E G is A minor seven. Mm -hmm. Same notes as A as C major six, right? Yeah. Andrew, can we not talk, please? A C E G is A minor seven, right? C E G A is C major six. They're the same notes, aren't they? So you can use those interchangeably with each other, can't you? A minor seven is the sixth chord in the key of C, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's a relative. That's a relative minor. So if you're playing a C major seven, you can substitute it with the A minor seven. It's more drastic than substituting it with the three. But it's kind of the same thing because it has all the same notes. It's a C major 6, isn't it? Oh. Same notes as a C major 6, isn't it? Just flip it over. So the substitute chords for a C major 7 would be the 1, 3, and 6. Okay? Now, we just talked about the 2 and the 4 being a substitute for each other. The last one is the dominant 7th chord, the 5 chord, and the 7th chord, the leading tone chord. Those two chords can be substituted for each other. We have one last hurrah for Greg. Greg. Yay. 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 No. Greg. No. Greg. No. Greg. And their shirts that say no when they watch that last one. Okay, Albert, move this up. Sorry. Thank you. So, we're going to play a. What's the, what's the uh, five chord in the key of G? The key of C. G7, right? So the leading tone, the seventh chord in the key of C, is going to be some kind of B diminished, right? Or and if it's a four note chord, it's going to be a B half diminished or a minor seven flat five. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So play a B minor seven flat five. Okay. Now play a G seven. Now play them together. What's the stack? A G seven with a B minor seven on flat five on top. What do you get there? You get G, B, G, what's the notes? F, A, all right? All right. So a G7 with a B minor 7 on top of it, here's your G7 here, and here's your B minor 7 flat 5. Those two chords together make a G9 chord, a 5 note chord. So they're closely related too, huh? So you can substitute a seven for a five. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. You can substitute a seven for a five any time. You can substitute a three for a one any time. You can substitute a four for a two any time. You can also substitute a six, but it's more dramatic than a three. So use with caution. Or not. Depends on what your effect is trying to, trying to do for your effect. Okay, so see you guys on Wednesday.